Hello everyone, this is 2.5 liter engine, 2 AR FE removed from a Toyota Camry. And today we're gonna discuss about the most common problems that can cause low compression or no compression at all in one or all of the cylinders. The problem number one can be the piston itself. If the piston is gonna have a hole in it, it's gonna lo lose compression through the crankcase. The problem number one are the piston rings. If you have a worn out piston rings, it's gonna, the engine is gonna lose compression also through the crankcase. And another problem is gonna be the cylinder walls. If you have damaged cylinder walls, then you will lose compression between the cylinder wall and the piston ring through the crankcase. And if, if you will do a leak down test, if you will do a leak down test and you will remove the dipstick, you will hear the air coming through the dipstick tube. Another problem is gonna be the cylinder head gasket. And here we have the cylinder head removed already and two gaskets. This is a good gasket, this is a bad gasket. This gasket was melted because the engine was overheated and this is how it looks. It's melted right here, but it was with low compression in first two cylinders and another two with no compression at all. And this is a good cylinder head gasket. Another problem is gonna be the valves and the valve seats. If you'll have bad valve seats, this is a valve seat, exhaust valve seat. Or if you'll have carbon build up on it, then the air is gonna escape through the exhaust side or through the intake side. Most of the, like most of the time, the problem is in the exhaust valves because they are exposed always to big temperatures, like they exposed to overheating. So sometimes we can have problems like this. This is a melted exhaust valve. It was removed from a TFSI engine 2.0 turbo Audi A4. And because it was melted like this, it was zero compression in cylinder number four. Sometimes they can have a lot of carbon buildup like this. And this carbon buildup is not gonna allow the valve to close all the way in. So the air is gonna escape through the valve and the valve seat on the exhaust side. Sometimes you can have a bent valve. If your, your engine is gonna be out of time, you, you have chances that the, the piston are gonna touch the valve and are gonna bend them. If the valve is gonna be bent, it's not gonna close properly and also it's gonna lose compression. Another problem can be the timing chain. The timing chain, the guides, or the bad tensioner. If it's not gonna be enough tension on the timing chain, there is a chance that your engine is gonna be out of time and the valves are not gonna close or open in the right time. So you also can lose compression. Another problem can be the, the camshafts. If it's gonna be a worn out sprocket on the camshaft, or in this case, this is a variable valve timing camshaft. The intake and exhaust, they are both variable valve timing. And here is the actuator inside. And this is a variable valve timing solenoid that is applying oil pressure through these holes. When the camshaft is receiving the pressure through these holes, the sprocket is changing the position related to the camshaft itself. So it's moving to retard and advanced position. If you have bad mechanism that is not gonna work properly, it's not gonna lock in place or it's gonna wiggle back and forth, then you also have chances that you will lose compression because the valves are not gonna close and open in the right time. So these are the most common problems. Now we're gonna take this engine apart. We're gonna do a complete tear down on it. Mention one more problem that can cause low compression. This is the, the spring that is closing the valve. If the spring is gonna be old and it's gonna lose it, its tension, it's not gonna apply enough tension on the valve, then it's not gonna be able to close it properly and you also are going to lose compression and that's it for today now we're going to do a complete tear down on this engine block because this one has a damage where it is it has a damage right there so we're gonna turn it upside down we're gonna remove the oil pan the oil is already draining and we're gonna separate the upper block from the lower block of the engine and we're gonna remove the pistons from inside.